In this series, we're discussing how you can move a little bit more like Spider-Man with his kind of agility and his finesse and his explosive speed. And of course, central to this discussion is the idea of proprioception. That's your ability to sense the position of your body in space and the amount of force you're exerting. And of course, this is crucial if you want to be able to dodge pumpkin bombs or run up the side of walls, etc. So that's what we're going to be discussing in this video. So proprioception sometimes is described as your sixth sense. Of course, this is a misnomer. We have far more than just five senses. But the idea of it as a sixth sense does tie in nicely with the theme of Spider-Man, who of course has his own sixth sense in the form of his spider sense. If you develop your proprioception, then it will seem almost like a sixth sense as you're able to move through the air with more grace, dodge incoming attacks, etc., without necessarily relying on your eyes and ears. And because so many of us ignore our proprioception, we don't listen to our bodies in the same way that we should do, that means that for most people, this sense is almost entirely inert, lost, you know, use it or lose it. It's good news because it means you only need to do a little bit of training to get a huge edge over everybody else. Proprioception relies on proprioceptors, and these come in three different broad flavors. They are muscle spindles. Muscle spindles are stretch receptors, and they tell you about the stretch in a muscle tendon unit. So in other words, how extended your limb is and whether or not you're in danger of overextending and causing injury. Of course, this helps to prevent injury, but it also allows you to assess the position of your limbs in space by getting that information from every single joint in your body, knowing exactly what angle it is and how stretched the muscles are and the antagonist muscles are. You can then infer from that where your body is, where each limb is, and create a kind of mental model of yourself to hold in your mind's eye as you're moving. Next, you have your Golgi tendon organs. These are your contraction sensors, and they tell you how much contraction you're exerting in your muscle. And again, they can help prevent injury by preventing you from exerting too much force and then ripping a tendon from a bone, for instance. At the same time, this allows gradation of force. So it's thanks to your Golgi tendon organs that you aren't constantly ripping the tap off the sink, which would be cool, but it's not terribly convenient. It's very expensive after a while. Golgi tendon organs are also what allow us to jump a specific height instead of just launching up in the air as high as we can every single time. Then you have your Capitian corpuscles. Capitian Pachinian corpuscles, corpuscles. These are the sensors in your skin that tell you about how much force you're exerting. So this will tell you, for instance, how much weight you're putting onto each foot. That, of course, is highly important if you want to balance, etc. When you balance or move through space, your brain is using all that information coalesced along with information from your eyes and from your ear canal. And it's using all this together to help you balance, to help you know where all of your limbs are and not bump into things, etc. Our body uses information from our muscle spindles, our pachinian corpuscles, calibrates this with information from our eyes and from our inner ears, and then it helps us to realign ourselves by changing the force subtly. A lot of this happens unconsciously without us even needing to think about it. Of course, this is partly thanks to something called the myotatic reflex. That means that when our muscle stretches suddenly, we'll contract the muscle to prevent overextension in that joint. So when you start to fall forwards, that's how your body catches yourself and tenses and braces to prevent you from falling without you needing to think about it. This is what we call a monosynaptic reflex. That means that it only involves two neurons and one connection, one synapse. This means it never actually goes through the brain. It all happens through the spinal cord. That shortening reflex isn't something that you consciously control. It's as fast as possible because it's a simple input output. This is an example of a kind of decentralized intelligence but most of our reflexes are polysynaptic. That means they have multiple connections, they run through our conscious brain, and they use lots of inputs from different senses. Prioception enables us to improve the quality of those inputs from our body so that we can make smarter decisions faster and therefore balance better, react quicker, and move with more agility. So how do you go about training your proprioception? Well, one of the first and easiest things you can do is simply listen to your body more and concentrate on it more consciously. So right now, think about where your body is in space. What position are you in? Where is the weight distributed on your body? Are you holding any tension? Does anything hurt? Realize suddenly you have all these inputs coming in that you normally ignore and simply by attending to them, you start to become better at listening to them throughout the day. One way we can do this in a formalized manner is through body scan meditation. This is not only important to help us athletically, but it can also prevent injury throughout our lives, especially as we get older and we start to lose some of our other senses. If you start listening to your feet, don't wear slippers and feel the ground beneath your feet as you go down the stairs, you're far less likely to fall down because you're getting all that new information from your body that helps you to right yourself and balance correctly. A lot of proprioception exercises that people recommend involve things like standing on balance boards and curling like weights or standing on one leg. And 
yeah, that's all right, but it's only gonna do so much. That's more about rehabilitation rather than developing awesome body awareness. If you wanna do that, then I recommend upping your game with some really difficult balance exercises, things like pistol squats, one-legged calf raises, or better yet, hand balancing. Many of us ignore the proprioception from our upper body relative to our lower body. And if you wanna take this one step further, then try closing your eyes and just listening to your body. Balancing upside down on your hands with your eyes closed shuts out some of those other senses and forces you to rely more on your proprioception. It's a weird way to train, but it's also kind of cool. Of course, make sure you don't injure yourself put a crash mat down, be sensible. In general, moving with more variety and moving in different ways will help you develop a greater body awareness because you'll be practicing positions that otherwise you completely ignore. Of course, it also develops supportive muscles and mobility that you also might have lost. One particularly popular notion at the moment is that of animal moves. Animal movements involve things like Spider-Man crawls or crawling on your back or like a bear or like a scorpion and basically moving in ways that are inspired by nature. A lot of programs then advise that you move between these positions in a kind of continuous flow that allows you to express yourself as well. This kind of training might look goofy and certainly some people will raise their eyebrows at it, but that's actually part of the point. In the book, Animal Moves, How to Move Like an Animal to Get You Leaner, Fitter, Stronger and Healthier for Life, they actually recommend having fun days. So you spend these doing things like climbing trees or juggling balls because playing is learning. And in this case, you're learning with your body, which is one of the best ways to develop not only more agility and dexterity, but also greater plasticity and learning potential. Whenever you go into one of these positions, you develop new neural pathways and actually increase the amount of connections in your brain. It's fantastic for brain plasticity. In one cool study, it was found that participants engaging in crawl training, so that means things like Spider-Man crawls and bear crawls along the ground, like we looked at in the last video, saw a significant improvement in their executive function and in their joint repositioning. Many studies have shown that training with novel movements are able to improve cognitive capacity. They can boost working memory, attention, creativity, and of course, the proprioceptive response. You can likewise adapt moves from other disciplines like capoeira, which is fantastic. I did that for a year. Uh, dance, of course, martial arts, other martial arts. One of the biggest advocates of this kind of training, of course, is Edu Portal, who focuses on training the movement. He believes that the purest way to train is just to focus on gaining new skills from these kinds of disciplines, rather than just building muscle or sticking to one discipline. So our takeaway from this is just to keep introducing lots of different movements. Of course, you can check out animal moves specifically or capoeira, but why not just integrate a bit of yoga, try a bit of calisthenics, just don't stick with a few staple exercises that you enjoy. Keep introducing lots of new and different ideas into your training. Stretching, of course, is also fantastic for developing proprioception. Of course, you're gonna feel the stretch in those muscle spindles. In particular, you could try proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation or PNF stretching. This involves getting into the stretch position and then slightly contracting the target muscle before completely relaxing it. Weighted stretching and slow eccentrics are also really useful. And I also advocate using quasi-isometrics, which I made a video on. This basically means really slowly performing a movement, like taking a minute to do a pull-up or a push-up. This way, you're changing the amount of force in order to gradually move up and down. It just gives you much more finesse and finer control over your muscles. Training outdoors is fantastic, and I've talked about this in the past, because when you train outdoors, every single movement is slightly different because the ground is different levels, because the terrain is different texture, because the wind resistance changes, because the tree branches are different heights and thicknesses. And finally, I highly recommend that you do barefoot exercise, that you either train bare feet sometimes or that you wear minimal footwear because this allows you to get that all important feedback from your feet, which are perhaps your most overlooked and possibly also most crucial proprioceptive inputs. So there you go, there's a ton of proprioception training techniques you can use to move much more like Spider-Man. In order to move like Spider-Man, you wanna practice moving like Spider-Man. That means things like Spider-Man crawls. But at the same time, you also wanna move more like Batroc the Leaper. You wanna move more like the Scorpion. You wanna move more like the Lizard. Practice doing this and you'll be far more adaptable. You'll have more control and more awareness of your body and you'll be more athletic in general. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. If you did, then please leave a like, share it around. That helps me out immensely. Comment down below. I have much more like this on the way soon. So if that sounds good, then stick around and I'll see you then. Thanks a ton for watching. Bye for now.